All right, a new 3D printer on the table. It's the Sovol SV06. There's been a lot of reviews already done on this 3D printer, but this is gonna be my take, so let's open her up. It doesn't seem to be a massive printer. Honestly, I haven't read the specifications of this printer, but we have a pretty decent instruction on how to level the bed, and then some general instructions. Okay, the first part is the display and I've honestly gotten quite a big fan of touch screens lately and this is just a standard Ender 3 type of display. It's fine, it works, but it's definitely going to be one of the cheaper options. And this is going to be your filament holder. So here we are opening it up to some pretty interesting parts. Here's the motherboard. Removing some more foam. It's definitely a smaller printer, but I like the textured build plate that they have it looks to be flexible so that you can flex the prints off that's that's great the filament holder some tools you get everything you need you get the clipper an extra nozzle scraper zip tie screws all the tools that you need to assemble the printer it's in here for a very tiny test piece i like when they don't have the shorter cable this seems to be a pretty long one Oh, here's the extruder assembly, it comes separate. We have an induction sensor. I like these a lot more than the BL Touch actually because sometimes I accidentally hit the pin, the tiny plastic pin on the BL Touch and it breaks. So I like these more. The cooling fan, we have a cooling fan for cooling off the plastic. A 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that's standard. Yeah, looks pretty solid. Just a standard power supply that they have painted black. Looks nice, but yeah, very generic. All right, let's see if we can get this first gantry out. There we go. And here's the rest of the printer. Again, it looks really solid. And the build plate is gonna be really interesting testing this. Here's everything we had in that bag. A pair of clippers, zip ties, a bunch of Allen keys, and a wrench, whatever those are called. A part for the filament holder, extra nozzle, scraper, spatula, a USB reader and with the USB, sorry, the micro SD card, all the screws to assemble the printer. So I'm just going to set everything to the side. From my experience, this is 9 out of 10 times the things you have to do is just to take the set access gantry and connect it to the base of the printer using the included screws. Did I actually mount it the wrong way? I did. Fuck me. I think it's clear you shouldn't use this video as an instruction video on how to assemble it. So this is the backside and here's a mounting plate for the motherboard. A very nice holder, a little over engineered if you ask me, but hey, it works. And it keeps it in place. And while we're here, we might as well put in the X motor with that cable. And what's next is probably the display. So I'm just going to turn this around and it clicks into place on these two screws that you can see on the side. And you just line it up to where they match and push it down. And there we go. It's now in place. At this point, it's just a matter of plugging in the cables. Here's the set axis wire cable. Plug that into this set axis motor. I'm gonna have to see where this goes in. Okay, there we go. So it goes into the EXP3. And that should be this one. And now, lastly, we have the set axis motor on this side. For the power supply, it should be pretty straightforward. Just gonna grab these two screws and we should be able to mount it on the back plate just like this. And now to connect the motherboard to the power supply, it's just a matter of connecting these two XT90 connectors. And now all there is left is the extruder. And this, I believe, fits per yeah yeah that's it it feels like i've said this a couple of times already but now there really should just be a couple of things left to do and that's to unclip this wire 
connector that goes from the motherboard all the way and this clips onto the extruder it's just one of those connectors that you click into place and the filament holder goes on top and that's gonna be it this straight up took no more than 20 minutes to do extremely easy assembly like most printers like you have to look you have to search pretty hard to find a good like DIY assembly 3d printer where it just takes hours to put together most printers nowadays they are pretty easy to install and this was no exception 20 minutes okay I've had this as my daily driver for a couple of weeks now I've done some test prints and I've encountered a few things that I want to share with you guys before we go any further now the build platform is 220 by 220 millimeters so a decent platform it has this PEI sheet that's metal and they are supposed to be great that hasn't been my experience unfortunately I had some major issues with warping it didn't stick all that well to the build plate out of the box the way I solved it was by taking one of those sniffing glue sticks and spreading it onto the build plate and now it sticks like crazy the only downside is that it can get a little sticky on the bottom side of your prints now the extruder I've been really pleased with it's a direct drive so TPU flexible filaments shouldn't be a problem and I did print a small ring and that was no issue whatsoever I did find one reviewer saying that he had a big problem with flexible filaments but I didn't find anyone else and I think it worked out pretty well and I've tested a lot of machines for TPU and also Ninja Flex which is one of the most flexible filaments you can buy and it was no problem for this machine you have to go slow the leveling sensor worked really well too so after assembling it I went to the screen and clicked leveling and it started to raise the set axis and because this printer has no physical switches when the x-axis goes home it hits this wall it doesn't hit the switch but the motor current goes up and that's how it knows it's at this position it does the same thing on the y-axis but the z-axis has a leveling sensor but the reason it goes up it's to hit the ceiling and level the z-axis motors so this bar is level and not crooked that's really smart and then it does the leveling which worked great I'm getting perfect first layers every single time I am however a big fan of having the manual knobs on most printers you can adjust knobs here to also adjust the bed and not just solely rely on the sensor but this time the sensor worked so well it's not a big deal for me but I really am a fan of the knobs now this is the three-dimensional lattice cube that I started off with and there are two things that your printer needs to do really well in order to print this one is cool and the other one is retraction the cooling on this extruder does look a little weak I would probably want to upgrade it but the retraction on this machine is just ridiculous you often need two to maybe eight millimeters of retraction but the recommended retraction length on this machine was 0.5 millimeters and it turned out fantastic there's barely any stringing coming off from the build plate now because it wouldn't be a review without something being printed in base mode here we go looks fantastic very consistent honestly it was mostly for the thumbnail okay it was printed in a somewhat translucent PLA which tends to hide some of the imperfections this 3d benchy looks incredible we got some slight stringing but that's it and here you have the final print that I made I'm not used to seeing a print come out with no stringing whatsoever you always have to hit it with a torch or a heating gun to get rid of some stringing but there's zero it just shows that the extruder is really well calibrated and here's the result so that was my review of the Sovol SV06 if you have any questions just comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them also go ahead and check out some other reviewers we always touch on different stuff when it comes to 3d printers so I would highly recommend you watch all the reviews of a printer and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one see you again in the next one bye